around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Trouble could start any time in Dodge. Usually it was at night that the men made their play along Front Street. And so ordinarily I was up a good part of the night and did my sleeping in the morning. It was a rare thing for me to be out in the early day and for some reason it worried Chester. I just don't understand why you couldn't sleep, Mr. Dillon. Unless you had the colic or something. <laughs> I feel fine, Chester. Just got a few things to take care of at the bank, that's all. Yes, I know, but the bank's open all day. Well, you know what they always say, Chester. It's the early bird that catches the worm. Yeah. My ma used to tell us that one about being healthy, wealthy, and wise. <laughs> she used to root us out of bed every morning at daylight on account of it. It's a good saying. Yeah. I don't know what ever become of my brothers, but I'm sure not living in a very big house. <laughs> well, maybe you ought to come in here more often. <laughs> I got no business with the bank, Mr. Dillon. Well, morning, Mr. Fogg. Morning, Chester. Morning, Mr. Dillon. Morning, Fogg. I'll be over there in a minute as soon as I straighten this stuff out. Good morning, Marshal. Good morning, Mr. Papp. Are you taking money out, Marshal, or putting it in? <laughs> Neither, Mr. Papp. This is government business. <laughs> oh, I see. Who are those men, Marshal? What? I say, who are those men? Uh, I never saw him before. That one in the middle holding the envelope, he seems pretty oh, excited about I something. Certainly, sir. What can I do for I you? I want a loan of money immediately. Well, we'll do what we can, sir. First of all, how much do you want? Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand... Mr. Pat! Yes? Yeah, excuse me, Martin. Gentlemen, this is our president. Uh, you'll have to talk with him. I heard you say twenty thousand dollars, gentlemen. That's a lot of money. What do you have for collateral? My collateral, sir, is right here in this envelope. You may look at it, but don't reveal it to these other gentlemen. These are playing don't, cards. Don't name them. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, I've been in a poker game at the Texas Trail all night long. Right now, there's about $40,000 in that pot. There are some good hands out. I've put every cent I have into it already. Now, they've given me just 20 minutes to come up with more money. <laughs> well, I certainly wish you luck, sir, but I never You've heard of You've seen them. my hand in that envelope. You can lend me the money on that. But surely, sir, you don't expect the bank to enter a gambling game. Now, these gentlemen are also in the game. They came along to see that those cards aren't changed. The other men are watching the table at the Texas Trail. It's all fair and square, I assure you. Well, gentlemen, I... I'll gladly pay you 10% interest, sir. You've only got five minutes left, Hook. Uh, come along, gentlemen. We'll step in the back office. Well... Now, that's about the craziest thing I ever did here. He must have a pretty good hand, Chester. I know, sir, but you don't think Mr. Papp's going to let him have $20,000 on it? It certainly looks that way. Yeah, there we are. I'll take care of this and we'll get out of here. Uh, this is government stuff, Fogg. You know what to do with it. Certainly, Mr. Dillon. Now, let me see... If... Marshal. Uh, Marshal, I want you to come with me. What? Uh, these gentlemen, th th there's a poker game, and I I've got the money here. I think you'd better come along just to be safe. You mean you gave him his $20,000, Mr. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Now, come over here, Marshal, I'll tell you. All right. And Marshal, that man hooked there has four aces and a ten in his hand. It's a sure thing. Why, the bank stands to make $2,000 on this loan, and it won't take but a few minutes. Well, you run the bank, Mr. Pepp, but are you sure you ought to take a gamble with other people's money this way? I can't lose. There's not a chance in a million. But I want you to protect this money till I get it back here. Well, all right. I'll see nobody takes it at the point of a gun if you think that'll help. Good, good. Now, you, you come along, then. 
Hook's only got a few minutes to get back in the game. There's my money, Mr. Shaneways. I'm calling you, sir. You must have a pretty good hand, Hook. All the trouble you've been to. You will see it. What have you got? Five little hearts, all blue. <laughs> I win, sir, four aces. But look at my hearts. They read two, three, four, five, and six. What? Straight flush. So your aces lose, Hook. Aces. Aces, how could he have a straight flush? Got it dealt right out of the deck, Hook. Right out of the deck. Ah, nice pot. Had enough, but he... He won. Mr. Papp. Sir, I, I, I don't know what to say. Twenty thousand dollars. Just like that, $20,000 is not even my well, money. Now, Mr. Papp, don't you worry, sir. I only borrowed that money. You'll have it back. You have my word as a Confederate gentleman on that. Hook, please. Hook, I've got to have it back. It's not my money. I have to put it back in the bank. I'll be ruined if people find out you about it. You only this. loaned the money, sir. I lost it. Now, I'll send for it today, sir. I'll wire my agents. They'll have it on the next side of fee that leaves St. Louis. No, Hook. No, I don't think that'll happen. My word as a gentleman, sir. But you must be patient. I shouldn't have done it. I had no right to do it. Chester. Yes, sir? Go tell Doc I want to see him. Yes, Mr. Dillon. All right. Everybody. Now listen to me. All of you. Now, I don't want a word said about this to anyone. The bank's important to Dodge, and this could ruin it. Do you understand? We have no reason to spread All right, then, see to it. Or there'll be trouble for all of you. Well, certainly, Mark. No reason to spread Mr. Papp, hold up a minute, will you? Mr. Papp? Marshal, I should have listened to you. I'm ruined now. Now, look, Mr. Papp. Maybe Hook's got money. I don't know. But if not, we'll figure something out. People will give you time. No. No, they won't. As soon as they hear about this, there won't be any bank. They won't trust it anymore. But they have to. It's the only bank there is. What'll Joanne think? My kids. I can't face it, Marshal. I just can't face it. Now, look, you just go back to the bank and tell the cashier to keep his mouth shut about this. You just got to give it time. Sure, Marshal. I'll go. I'll go. Marshal. Uh, Marshal, sir. I am sorry for that man, but he has no reason to worry. I'll send for the money at once. Yeah, you do that, Mr. Hook. Send for the money. Uh, gentlemen, what are your names? My name's Shaneways, Marshal. Now, I'm sorry for that banker, but it's nothing to do with me. I won this money fair, and I'm keeping it. Sure, Mr. Shaneways, of course you are. Uh, who are you, Mr. Warden? And I agree with Shane Ways. Gambling money's fair money. Nobody is arguing that, Mr. Varden. But remember, gentlemen, what I said. Don't talk about this. Oh, well, hey, uh, Matt. Chester said you wanted me. What's happened? Didn't hear any shooting. Everything's all right, Doc. Oh, well, that's it. Oh. <laughs> you look familiar. <laughs> Don't you? I haven't had the pleasure, sir. Oh, well, maybe not, uh... No, I guess not. My mistake. Uh, never mind, Doc. Come on. Yeah. <clears throat> Chester said he'd wait at the office, Matt. 
Look, Doc, I want you to go over to the bank. Mr. Papp is pretty upset. See what you can do for him, huh? Give him a bromide or something. Oh, sure, man. What's wrong with him, anyway? He just lost $20,000 in a poker game. He lost twenty. And he wasn't playing. He lent the money on the strength of what looked like a good hand. That man, Hook, came into the bank for it with the other two. Oh. He brought his cards along and raised the loan that way, huh? What? How did you know? Oh, I, I heard of it once, Matt. It was down in New Orleans. Oh, that was years ago. Well, what happened? Well, the same thing. Fellow got the money and he lost it. That's all. You mean it was fixed between him and the others? Oh, <laughs> sure. It was fixed all right. Well, how did they find out? Well, the fellow that borrowed the money got drunk and he talked and they put him in jail. But, but the others got away clean. Look, Doc, that gray-haired man you thought you recognized, his name's Hook. Are you sure you never saw him before? Oh, a lot of people look familiar at first glance, man. You know how did you... Look, in New Orleans, you you didn't know the men who pulled the trick on the bank, did you? Well, people said that they'd come down on the riverboat. I was doctor on the Tennessee Bell then, but I never met them, not to my knowledge anyway. You recall hearing their names? Well, that was a long time ago, Matt. Look, Doc, those three back there may have just pulled the same thing now. Hook looked familiar to you. Maybe he remembers you, too. Well, he just said he'd never met Doc, me, Doc, he could be lying. Well, sure, but I'm, I can't place him. I probably never saw him before. Well, go see what you can do for Pep. He's in pretty bad shape. Well, sure, Matt. Gamblers were always drifting in and out of Dodge. Some of them were crooked, and some, it had been said, were honest. Ordinarily, it didn't matter much one way or the other. Most men could take care of themselves. But now the bank was involved. And the citizens of Dodge had their faith in that bank, as well as their money. I gave it a lot of thought the next hour or so, and finally I had an idea that seemed like a start anyway. I explained it to Chester, and together we went back to the Texas Trail. Shane Ways and Varden were idly cutting cars. And Hook was at the bar talking to Kitty. <laughs> Hello, Matt. Kitty. Yes, sir. Hi, Miss Kitty. Uh, do you know Mr. Hook? Uh, this is Marshal Dillon. We met earlier, Kitty. Why, yes, indeed. This morning? I must have smelled trouble, Kitty. I got up early. <laughs> You're always smelling trouble, Matt. Yeah. Leave your beer, Hook, and come with me. What for? Just do it. <laughs> Whatever you say, Marshal. Miss Kitty, I'll be back. Yeah, sure. All right, Varden, Shaneways, get up and follow Chester. What? Is this an arrest? Now, what would I be arresting you for, Mr. Shaneways? What? Nothing. You've no reason. That's right. All right, come on, let's go. Just follow her along, please. All right. Well, what is the idea of bringing us in here, Marshal? Well, good morning, gentlemen. What can I... Oh, hello, Marshal. Chester. Hello, Lum. Lum, these men want their pictures taken. Oh, no, not me. I don't. I've got plenty of pictures. Can you do it right away, Lum? Oh, certainly can, Marshal. And, gentlemen, you'll be the very first to stand before a new drop. The ancient temples of Greece. It'll lend you dignity and power. What's the idea of this, Marshal? Lum's just going to take your pictures, that's all. Oh, uh, Lum, front and side views both, huh? Oh, certainly, Marshal, certainly. And then, gentlemen, if you leave Dodge, any of you, it'll make it a lot easier for the law to find you and bring you back wherever you go. This is outrageous. I won't stand for it. I... Pardon, wait a minute. I agree the Marshal is being a little high-handed, but after all, he must protect himself in his job. But since we've done nothing wrong, we have nothing to fear. Sure. Hook's right, Wolf Garden. I'll go first. Are you ready, Lum? No, right this way, sir. Chester, you stay here and wait for the pictures. Bring them over when they're finished. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Lum, 
a pretty good photographer, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, these aren't bad. Uh, lock them up in the safe, will you, Chester? All right. You think this will keep them in Dodge, sir? No, not if they really get scared. They're guilty, all right, aren't they, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, and I can't prove a thing, Chester, one way or the other. Uh, Mac! Oh, man, that... Bad news. What, Doc? Well, this is Pap. Sent for me a little while ago. I just come from there. Oh? Huh? Matt, he... He killed himself. Suicide. Pap? About an hour ago. Why, well, that poor man. How's Mrs. Pap taking it? Not a tear so far, but I suppose she'll break down later. Neighbor woman's there with her. Yeah. Does she know why he did it, Doc? Well, it seems he told her all about it, and... Then he went out and he shot himself. Uh, there's no stopping it now. The story will be all over town in no time. Well, what are you going to do now, Matt? I don't know, Doc. I just don't know. We will return with the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, today's opportunity knocks twice for qualified women. For the younger woman, the career of nursing offers opportunity unlimited. Ask how you can enroll as a student nurse at any hospital at the nurse's registry desk. And for the older woman, there are many thousands of openings in practical nursing. Graduate nurses or practical nurses will find expanding career opportunities for years to come. Act immediately. Serve humanity and provide for your own secure future. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. Buy you a drink, Kitty. Uh, gosh, I'd like it, Matt, but I just said I'd join Hook over at his table. Well, I'd like to talk to him, too. I'll just sit with you for a few minutes. That's fine with me. I don't know about him, though. Oh, I don't think he would object. I, uh, just have time for a smoke, Mr. Hook. I didn't think you'd mind. Why, no, of course not. You're quite welcome, Marshal. May I buy you a drink? No, thank you. Marshal, I want you to know I sent for that money today, just as I promised. Oh? You're a little late. Late? Mr. Papp shot himself. He, d he did. You mean Mr. Papp, the banker? Yeah. But why, Matt? He would always seem so quiet like. Maybe Mr. Hook will explain it, Kitty. Well, now, Marshal, you can't hold me responsible in any way at all. I didn't say I Matt. could, Hook. But you seem kind of nervous about it. Well, naturally, I'm upset. After all, that man did me a great favor. Yeah, sure, like... sure. But I don't think the people in Dodge are going to like it much when they find out. Tell me something, Mr. Hook. When were you in New Orleans last? New Orleans? Mm-hmm. Well, why do you ask that, Marshal? Just curious. Well, sir, I've never been in New Orleans. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's good enough. For now. Goodbye, Kitty. I'll drop by later. Sure, Matt. And, uh, Mr. Hook, it still goes about not leaving town. I like it here, Marshal. Yeah. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Maybe I should have arrested Hook and his friends without any evidence and just seized the $20,000 and put it back where it belonged. That might have saved people's faith in the bank, but I figured my job was to give them faith in the law, and I couldn't do it that way. I'd made it plain to Hook what I suspected, and I hoped it'd scare him into making a mistake. And it did. But I didn't learn about it until next morning when I was having breakfast at the Dodge house. Mr. Dillon? What? I've been looking everywhere for you at your room, Delmonico's, the Texas Trail, everywhere. This is the last place I hit. Well, what is it, Chester? Here. Look at here. Just you read that. Marshal, we're taking Doc along. If you follow us, we'll kill him. 
Where'd you get this, Chester? He was under the door when I opened up this morning. I ran up to Doc's right away, and sure enough, Mr. Dillon, he's gone. Come on. Uh, go check the depot and the stage line, Chester. I'll cover the livery stables. All right, sir. That'll take me longer, so you get our horses ready. I'll meet you at the office. Yes, sir. Not early enough, Andy. Yeah? What can I do for you? I want to know if you rented out any horses last night. Well, sure. A few. Why? Did you rent four to anybody? Four in a bunch? Why, yes, I sure did. Be back today, so they said. Who said? Well, strangers to me. Paid me in advance, though. (laughs) The greenhorn. What time was this, Andy? Oh, uh, it was late. Yeah, it was way after midnight it was. Something wrong? Yeah. Tell me, Andy, what they look like. Well, one was a was an old fellow, gray hair. Didn't give me his name, though. I don't think I got much of a look at the other one. You have any idea which trail they took out of town? Why, no, I don't. Uh, one of them said something about St. Louis. Uh, but that's not much help, is it? That might be. Oh, well, thanks, Andy. Oh, one thing, Marshal. Yeah? If you're riding after them, those horses, they got are just crow baits. I didn't figure they could handle anything better. There was nothing to do but take a chance and ride east. Luck was with us, though, and within an hour we cut their trail. Four horses leave a pretty fair track, and we followed it riding hard. By dusk, we could tell by their sign that we'd nearly caught up with them. And soon after dark, we spotted their fire. These were gentlemen, maybe, but they were mighty poor hands on the prairie. We left our horses and went ahead on foot. We gonna shoot it out with them, Mr. Dillon? No, we can't chance it, Chester. They'd kill Doc. Yeah. Now, hold up a minute. Now, that's their horses just ahead. <laughs> they sure staked them a good piece from camp. Yeah. Lie down, Chester. What do we do, Mr. Dillon? I just wait. Those men are mighty green at this game. I think we can steal their horses without any trouble at all. Just leave my foot, huh? Yeah. Now, look, Chester, when we get those horses, I want you to pick up ours and take the whole bunch out of sight. I'm going to crawl into that tall grass just to the left of the fire there and hide until morning. Mr. Dillon, why can't I go with you? Every time we get in trouble, you always send me off alone somewhere. You always do everything alone. Do as I tell you, Chester. Yes, sir. You just wait till you hear gunfire. And then ride in fast and bring all the horses. All right. Good luck. By dawn next morning, I was half burrowed into the ground and covered by blue stem grass. Not more than 30 feet from their camp. I could hear their talk all right, but I couldn't see them unless they were on their feet. Shaneways had already gone out after the horses. Pretty soon he was back. With their ropes, that's what every last one of them. What do we do now? You and Shaneways go after them. I'll stay here and guard Doc. Now hurry up, we've got to get moving. Come on, Bardner, we'll never find them. I'm coming. I don't want you You can have this country, Doc. I don't know why you ever left that soft berth you had on the Tennessee Bell. Well, I didn't have to leave it. <laughs> That's more than you can say about New Orleans. More <laughs> talk like that, you get your throat slashed like a fat show, Doctor. Oh, spoken like a true gentleman, the hook. Or whatever your name is. No, if you hadn't talked so much in the first place, you wouldn't be where you are now. Oh, you're a fool, Hook. I might have seen you somewhere, but I sure couldn't connect you with that New Orleans business. <laughs> anyway, you're giving yourself away now. Just how? Don't you know there wasn't a thing the law could do until you ran? Oh, 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 you'll be caught now for sure, yeah. Oh, I doubt it. Why don't you untie my hands? I can't eat this way. You'll manage. I let Hook and Doc wrangle on till I figured the other two men had walked about a half a mile from camp. And then I waited till Hook had his back to me, and I stood up slowly and moved quietly forward. Doc saw me and almost spoiled the game, but he caught himself in time and then started another argument with Hook 
I was about 15 feet away when Doc suddenly kicked the coffee pot off the fire and all over Hook's legs. And then I moved. Oh! Hit him again, Matt. He can stand it. No, no. No, that's enough. All right, get up, Hook. Uh, oh, Marshal, easy now. Don't, don't shoot. Get Marshall. Doc untied and be quick about yeah, it. Yeah, get me untied and be quick about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that feels better. Oh, Hook. If I weren't a professional man, I'd punch you right in the eye. Never mind, Doc. Here, put his gun in your belt. Yeah, I'm just mad enough. I'd like to have an excuse to use this. Uh, Matt, what are you doing? You'll see. Uh, Matt! Why, you'll have them back here in no time. I got a surprise for Hook, but he's not going to like it much. Huh? Oh, Where have they uh, got the money, Doc? He in that saddlebag, right over there. The All right, get it. Call you quick. Hurry up. Them two didn't get very far away. All right, Doc, if you got the money, get up on the horse. You too, Hook. Come on, quick now. Come on. Yonder they the come. You see him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I see him. They're shooting at us. Well, I'll fix that. All right, hold it, Chester. They can't hit us from there. Come on, let's ride. <laughs> you just going to ride off and leave them, Matt? Well, we got you, Doc, and we got Hook, and we got the money. Oh, but they'll, they'll die out here, Marshal. Because none of us know how to live on this prairie. Well, maybe they'll learn. It's a good way. You're murdering those men. Oh, they'll be all right for a few days, Hook. You'll all meet in prison. All right, ease up. Hold. We've left. Hold uh, well, what do you plan to do about them? They're full of fight right now, that's all. I don't want to have to kill them to take them. But in a few days, they'll be so hungry and scared, we can walk right up to them. Nobody will get hurt that way. Neither them or us. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Mr. Dillon, later, in a couple of days, let me come back and bring them in. What? Just me, this time, alone. Well, now, Chester, Please, I... Please, uh... Mr. Dillon. Okay, Chester. You can do it. Alone. Thank you, sir. All right, Hook. Right a little faster there. We ain't got all day. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Ralph Moody, James Nusser, Joe Cranston, Paul Dubov, and Peter Leeds. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. This Monday night on the Lux Radio Theater, June Allison recreates her original screen role and appears as the girl in white. Don't miss the Lux Radio Theater this Monday night on most of these same CBS radio stations. George Walsh speaking. America now wakes up to three million clock radios and listens most to the CBS Radio Network.